Hey, good morning, church. Thank you so much for joining with us today. I look forward to an awesome Sunday for us to meet together virtually. And I look forward to Pastor bringing us a, 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 a kind of an old series, but we're bringing it right back now. Uh, it's all about our identity. Uh, I'm so thankful that our identity is not made up of our address. It's not made up of our zip code. Uh, it, it's all about what we're founded in, in Christ. And we're going to see from the Word of God uh, how we can get a deeper meaning of our identity with Him. Uh, and so join with us today as we worship. Uh, let's start today off by praying and we'll continue our service. Let's pray. God, thank you so much for the opportunity for us to meet together. Uh, God, thank you so much for every single individual that's tuned in today. Uh, God, I ask you specifically today, if there's somebody out there that doesn't know Jesus as their Savior, uh, that's the most vital, important thing they can do in their life. God, if that's their heart today, uh, help them to know for sure uh, that they have a relationship that's been restored by Jesus today. Uh, God, thank you so much for the many blessings that you've given us. Uh, God, thank you so, so much for everything you've given to us that we don't deserve. Uh, God, give us a great day. Help us to worship together in unity. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, good morning, everybody. So glad you joined us this morning. Uh, let's worship together this morning.
Good morning, and thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, I want to thank each and every one of you. Hope you've had a great week. Uh, thank you for virtually joining us together today. And uh, just looking forward to a great morning together. Appreciate everyone that's already helped out with music. I uh, know, I hope and I pray you've enjoyed that. But I do want to say a special thank you this morning. Uh, thank you for our church family and how you have just uh, poured out your love uh, to me, to my family as well as our entire staff this week. Uh, the, the parade on Tuesday uh, during our staff meeting, man, that was great. Uh, we appreciate uh, the support, the love, seeing your faces. Man, we really enjoyed the, the treats, the goodies, the cookies. Uh, those, of course, have not gone unnoticed, so we appreciate that. Also, just want to uh, thank you guys so much. You know, when I walk in to uh, record this morning, I uh, look much different than it normally does. And I uh, thank you guys for those of you that have participated. And I walked into not an empty auditorium uh, this morning, but it walked into an auditorium that was filled with uh, posters, with pictures, with verses, with support on the pews. And uh, it just it meant so much and it means so much. And I cannot express how grateful I am for each and every one of you that have helped out with that. Uh, miss our church family. I do want to say this. Hey, tune in Tuesday afternoon at 5 o'clock. Tuesday afternoon, 5 o'clock, we have got some big updates uh, about the schedule, about uh, upcoming schedule for our church. Uh, you know, we're excited about that, so I encourage you guys, uh, make you wait, but tune in Tuesday afternoon, 5 o'clock, for some big updates uh, for our church family. But this morning, uh, you can open up to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Uh, actually going to jump into an old sermon series. You're like, what? Jump into an old sermon series. Uh, we're going to pick up, we're going to pick up where we left off. Uh, last time we were in this series was back on March 15th, which was our last uh, physical service uh, together. And, and the series title was Everything Changed. And we had already been in that series for a couple of weeks. And man, we had no idea how everything really would change. You know, but that's not the change we're talking about. We're actually talking about change that only God can make. Uh, change that, that only God can execute. And, and I'm so thankful that we think about our individual lives. Man, I hope and pray this morning that, that we can all agree that, you know, Jesus is a difference maker. That, that God has changed our life. And if you're tuned in today, I want you to know that God can change your life. Uh, don't neglect His voice. Don't neglect His word. Allow God to speak to you today. But 1 Corinthians chapter 12, this was kind of week three of this sermon series and, uh, on everything changed. And we're going to look at uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and we're going to begin in verse number 24. So you can go and look at verse 24 of 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And it's interesting because the Apostle Paul is talking to the church about the church. Uh, kind of interesting uh, wordage there, but you know, Paul is really talking to the church of Corinth, instructing them about really what the church is and what the church was uh, in the day in which the Paul was writing to these Corinthian believers. And you know, we can be reminded today that uh, you know, as we look in the Word of God, the Word of God defines church. You know, it can be easy to fall into the rut of allowing culture to define church or allowing people to define church, or allowing a church to define church. You know, but I'm so thankful that the Word of God, it is the formula. Uh, Jesus, has, of course, as the foundation of the church, has clearly defined the church throughout His Word. You know, Paul, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, is, is talking with the church of Corinth. He's instructing them on, on simply what it means to be a part of the church. Uh, he's instructing them on the different roles in a church. But notice in verse 24, it says, for our comely parts have no need, but notice this truth, but God has tempered the body together. But God has tempered the body together. We're going to uh, talk about what that means. Having given more abundant honor to the part which lacked. Verse 25, 
that there should be no uh, schism or division in the body, but that the members should have the same care one for another. And whether one member suffer, all the members suffer with it. Or one member be honored, all the members rejoice with it. Now you are the body of Christ and members in particular. And God has set some in the church, first apostles, secondarily prophets, thirdly uh, teachers. After that, miracles and the gifts of healings, helps, governments, diversities of tongues. And you know, it's interesting, as, as we're about to open up in a word of prayer, I want you just to really think about uh, this morning as a church family, Breezy Hill Baptist Church. What makes us us? You're like, wow, that's an interesting statement. What makes us, Breezy Hill Baptist Church, what makes us a church? What makes us a unique church? What makes us God's church? You know, I think the Apostle Paul clearly answers some of these questions here in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. But let's open up with a word of prayer. God, as we come before you, God, thank you for your love. God, I just want to thank you for our church family. Lord, thank you for how much they have even demonstrated your love this week to us as a staff, Lord, to me as a pastor. And God, just thank you for each and every one of them. Uh, Lord, uh, you know my heart. You know how much, Lord, I miss them being out here this morning. But God, I want to thank you that, Lord, this building doesn't define church. Uh, these pews do not define church. God, I'm so thankful that uh, the people that are tuned in today are, are who makes up the church. Lord, you have defined church. And I pray that even through these times of uncertainty, God, even through these times of change, even through this season to where ministry as we know it may have looked a little different. God, thank you that you have clearly laid out the definition of what church is. God, we, we thank you. We praise you. We ask all this in Jesus' precious and holy name. Amen. You know, as we dive back into 1 Corinthians chapter 12, you know, Paul reminds us of some very important principles about church. Uh, if I were to ask that question today, uh, what is church? Uh, you know, for us, it's like, well, you know, my church is Breezy Hill Baptist Church, 612 Escoga Lake Road. Some of you tuned in. Uh, you may remember some of the additions that have taken place. You might even remember the original sanctuary that was the, the teen life room, and now it's the multi-purpose room. But, you know, we can all agree that as we dive into the Word of God, the, the church is much more than a building. The church is much more than a physical address. In fact, any time we find ourselves uh, reducing church, to a service time, to a method, and to a physical address, we have gotten away from the true definition of what the New Testament church is. Because we believe, uh, because the Word of God teaches, that the church is much more than the building. As we see Paul identifying in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, the church is much more than a building because the church is actually a body. And we'll look at some of these truths this morning. But the first thing that we can see in the context of 1 Corinthians chapter 12 about the church is that Paul was reminding us of the true identity of the church. Paul reminds us of the identity of the church. Jump back into verse 24. You know, it says, For the comely parts have no need, but God has tempered the body together. God has put together his church. God has tempered together the body. If you look back in verse number 12 uh, here in chapter 12, you notice verse 12 says this, for as the body is one and hath many members and all the members of that one body being many are one body, so also is Christ. This is the identity. The church is the body of believers. The church is the individuals that God has brought together, tempered together to, to of course develop Develop his local church. Verse 18. But now have God set the members, every one of them, the body, as it has, notice this, please him. May God brings the people that God needs to accomplish his purpose in the local church. As we see in verse number 18, it is at, it has pleased him. Let's remember the church is formulated, the church is identified, the church is identified and defined not by what pleases people, but by what pleases God. May Breezy Hill Baptist Church let us remember it's not what about pleases people, it's about what pleases God. We must honor God, we must honor God's word because it is God that has given us our identity. Paul is reminding us, 
reminding us of this identity. Uh, back in verse 24, the comely parts have no need, but God has tempered the body together, having given more abundant to the part which lacked. See, when we see that God has tempered the body together, this is what that means. That God has arranged the church. God has orchestrated the church. And it is God who formulates the church. This term that Paul would use, tempered, uh, if you know anything about uh, blacksmithing, uh, I mentioned a couple of days ago, how, or a couple of weeks ago, how I have this infatuation with gold mining. Actually, another thing that I enjoy is watching blacksmiths at work. Uh, maybe if you've ever been to Dollywood, they've got a, a, a place at Dollywood where you can see a blacksmith working uh, in, in his forge. And that's such a cool and such an interesting process. But, but what is so interesting about uh, the blacksmithing process is something that is known as tempering steel. You know, when steel is tempered, uh, what takes place is that, uh, he, that, that actually the steel is heated to an extreme temperature and it is placed in oil or is placed in water by a process known as quenching. And when that takes place, the steel is tempered. That means the steel is strengthened. The steel and all the molecules of the steel becomes a stronger blade. Why? Because of the tempering process. Paul would point out, verse number 24, that it is God that has tempered the body together. Man, if we want to be strengthened as a church family, if we want to be strengthened as a church body, we must understand that we find our strength not through ourselves. We find our strength not through each other. We find our strength not through a building. We find our strength through God because it's God that has placed us together. It is God that tempers us together. The process of tempering, of course, makes metal stronger. Understand that as a church, we're strengthened when we understand that it is God who has given us our identity, placing us exactly where we are. Down in verse 27, you notice what Paul would point out. You are the body of Christ and you are members in particular he would begin to talk about uh, some of these members, some of these roles in verse number 28. God has sent some of the church, first apostles, secondarily prophets, thirdly teachers, and after that miracles, the gifts of healings, helps, governments, diversities of tongues. You know, we see the diversity, diversities, we'll talk about this in just a few moments, but when we understand the identity of church, we understand that, of course, Jesus Christ is our foundation. Jesus Christ is the head of the church, but we get to come together to form His body. And understand with this, there are diversities. With this, there may be members that feel like they're not important. But what Paul is reminding us of is that each and every member of the body of Christ is equally important. There is no such thing as one role that is more important than another role. Why? Because it is God that has formulated us. It is God that has brought us together. Breezy Hill Baptist Church, members tuned in. Man, if you are a visitor today, I want each and every one of you to understand if you matter to God, it does not matter who makes you feel like you don't matter. Think about that truth. When you matter to God, it does not matter who makes you feel like you don't matter. Because at the end of the day, when we matter to God, we have all the matter that we would ever need. Uh, today, if you are tuned in, understand you are important to God. And because you're important to God, you're important to this church. And because you're important to God, you are important to me People may have made you feel all throughout your life like you don't matter. But understand, God has you who you are for a reason. God can use you for who you are, for who you are. God can use you where you are at. It's a matter of us as the body of Christ, allowing God to use us for His purpose, for His plan, and to execute His will upon our lives. The true identity of the church. Man, I'm so thankful that the church is more than a building. Man, I think the past weeks have proven this. You may say, Pastor, I just frankly don't like this season. You know, I can agree with you. I have not necessarily enjoyed the format. I like it much more when the building is full, but understand the building is not the church. Today you are the church. 
That means wherever you are gathered, you are the church. The Word of God promises us that where two or three are gathered in His name, He is in the midst of us. Uh, Today, as the church, we can execute the plan and God's purpose for the church no matter where we find ourselves. Let's remember the true identity of the church. You know what happens when we limit the identity of the church to what happens in this building, what happens behind this pulpit, what happens at this altar, and what happens in these pews? When we find ourselves limiting church to what happens here, what we find ourselves guilty of doing is allowing all the church in our life to happen here. But to understand, we must go to church, but first and foremost, we must be the church. Take this opportunity, take this season to be the church where God has you now. You know, sometimes we can find ourselves frustrated because of seasons we find ourselves in. Let us not forget, nothing takes God by surprise. Perhaps, maybe God has us where we are right here in this season for a specific reason. Maybe there's somebody tuned in right now that if it were were not for this season, you would not hear God's word this morning. Man, listen to the voice of God. Maybe it's a a, a member that you would say, you know, typically on a Sunday morning at 9.30 I would be at Sunday school. At 10.30 I would be physically sitting in my place. Maybe God has you where you are for a reason. Maybe there's someone in your life that God can use this season to draw them to Him. Let's allow God to use us where we're at. See, because when we do not allow God to use us where we're at, chances are we're not going to allow God to use us where He has taken us. Take this opportunity to remember our identity as a church. It's not in a building. It's not in property. It's not in, uh, it's not in ministry programs. Our identity is in God's Word. Our identity is that Jesus Christ is our foundation. Jesus Christ is the, the chief cornerstone. And Jesus Christ, of course, we get the opportunity to be a part of His body this morning. We're one body in Christ. We're members in particular Matthew chapter 16, verse 8, verse 18, excuse me, remember what what Jesus would share with Peter. He said, uh, upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Remember, this is not my church. I get to be a part of it. This church does not belong to me. This church does not belong to to the people that occupy, occupy the pews. This church belongs to God. That is our identity. Let's remember our identity. Let's remember who we are. See, because when we remember who we are, we can accomplish what we are created to do. Paul reminds us of this identity. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19 and 20. Know ye not that your body is the temple. We are the church. We're the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which you have of God and you're not of your own. For ye are bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit. Notice this, which are God's. Man, our identity. Our identity is found in Jesus. Our identity is found in the reality that yet everything has been changed because Jesus has has changed everything. Our identity rests in the reality that Jesus Christ, as as a young boy, changed my life. I want each and every one of you tuned in to have the same confidence that you can point back to the time in your life where you placed your faith and trust in Jesus. Allow Jesus to be your identity. The identity of the church. See, the greatest principle in defining who we are is remembering whose we are. The greatest principle in in remembering the definition of who we are is remembering who we are. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 20. What does Paul remind us of? Man, we are not our own. We are bought with a price. Therefore, we must glorify God with our body, which are our spirits. Why? Because they are not our own. They are God's. We are not our own. We're reminded not just of the identity of the church, but notice the second principle this morning. We are reminded of the unity of the church. So not just the identity, but the unity of the church. Notice back in verse number 12. Paul would say this, for the body is one. You know, I think no simple word defines the word unity better than the word one. Together, the same, in unison, unity one, verse 13. For by one spirit we're all baptized into one body. 
whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, we have all been made to drink into one spirit. Man, I'm thank so thankful. Paul would instruct Timothy, there's one God, there's one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. At the foot of the cross, there is level ground. At the foot of the cross, there is unity. It doesn't matter what color you are. It doesn't matter the sins you've committed in your life. It doesn't matter the wrongs that you have done to others or that others have done to you. Jesus went to the cross for you. Today, I am that one. You are that one. Each and every one of us are that one. We get the opportunity because of Jesus, because of the cross, because of the gospel, to enter into a relationship with God through the person of Jesus Christ to be a part of a much bigger plan, a much bigger purpose known as the body of the local believers, the body of Christ to where we can be unified with one goal, with one purpose, with one Savior. And that Savior is Jesus Christ. Verse 24, God's tempered the body together. God has tempered us. He's made us one. He unites us. Today, let us make sure we are united. We may not always agree on everything, but let us focus on the things we can't agree on. I understand behind the camera there's different preferences, there's different people. That is okay because God has made us different. But understand, we can be united around God's Word. We can be united around the Gospel. We can be united around the mission. We're reminded of the importance of unity here in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 25. Notice it's important that there should be no schism. There should be no division you know, Paul's reminding the church of Corinth, they struggled with division. They struggled with, with, you know, having quarrels among them. But Paul is reminding them, as the church, be united. You know what Satan loves to do? Satan loves to divide and conquer. He knows that if he divides us, that he can divide what God has called us to do. Man, but I'm so thankful. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Today, Satan is no match for my Savior. Today, Satan is no match for my God. And today, Satan is no match for the church. Why? Because of the head of the church. Not through us, not through our strength, not through our power, but through the power of God. Let us be united. Paul is teaching the church of Corinth about church. Today, maybe it's time that we go to the school of church. We allow the Word of God to instruct us. Not of what we think about church, not of what we've always experienced in church. Because sometimes what happens is what we've experienced in church, what we think about church, turns into our definition of the church. But let's not redefine what God has already defined. I mean, the church is given its identity. The church is taught the importance of unity. Let there be no division. Today, if there's division, take care of it. Today, if we are not united, let us get united for the cause of Christ, for the purpose of the gospel. Notice in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 10, Paul says, now I beseech you. We talked about that word beseech many times. Paul's saying, I beg you, I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be perfectly joined together in the same mind, in the same judgment. You think about a team that is divided. A team that is divided, chances are they're not going to win because they're not practicing teamwork. Understand, if God has called us to be united, if we are ever divided, we cannot expect to win with what God has called us to do. Let us be united. Let us be on the same page. Let us remember what it is that He unites us. David Jeremiah said this, Unity is an organic oneness based on Christ as the common center. Believers are not required to create unity, but to keep unity that is already theirs through Christ. See, unity is not something that we find. Unity is not something we search for. Unity is something we claim, just like victory in our life. Victory is something that's already been obtained. It was obtained on the cross. Today, unity is not something we strive for. Unity is not something we work towards. Unity is something we must, we must claim. Why? Because Jesus has united us. Through His death, through His resurrection, through His position as the head of the church. Philippians chapter 2, verse 2. Paul would say, fulfill you my joy. Find my joy is what he's instructing the church of Philippi. 
that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord and of one mind. Let us be united. Romans chapter 15, verse 6, that ye may with one mind and one mouth glorify God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Man, we have something uh, great to talk about today. It is much more than something good to talk about. It is something great to talk about, and that is the person of Jesus Christ. Man, we have so many great things we can say about Jesus. We have so many great things we can say about God that we may with one mouth and one mind glorify God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. One author said this, I want the whole Christ for my Savior. I want the whole Bible for my book. I want the whole church for my fellowship. And I want the whole world for my mission field. I mean, that is what takes place when unity emerges. Let's claim that unity. See, Paul reminds us not just of the unity of the church, not just of the identity of the church. The final thought this morning will be finished. Paul reminds us of the diversity of the church. I mean, we do not like to talk about diversity. Man, you think about this, man, the world would be a whole lot easier if everybody was like you, like me, right? It'd be, uh, it, why? Because when we start talking about differences, you know, sometimes our differences divide us. Notice what Paul would teach about the importance of diversity in the church. Verse number 4, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, there's diversity of gifts. God's given us different gifts. Verse number 5, there's diversity of administrations. Verse number 6, there's diversity of operations. Verse number 12, there's one body, but that body has diversity. It has many members. Uh, verse 14, the body is not one member, but many. Verse 18, but now God has set, God has placed every one of them in the body. Notice this, as it has pleased Him. God uses this diversity for His plan, for His purpose and for His will to be accomplished. See, God has made us all different people with different gifts as it pleases Him. Notice this. It pleases Him that we are different. I mean, you want diversity to emerge? Start talking about preferences. You want diversity to emerge? Start talking about politics. Let's remember what unites us. We may experience a lot of diversity here on earth, but understand we can be united around Jesus. We can be united around what really matters. Man, what matters for eternity. I'm just going to be frank with you guys uh, right now for just a moment. You know, if we can be honest, politics do not matter for eternity, but Jesus does. Let us make sure that we don't get so wrapped up in what matters for the temporary that we lose sight of what matters for eternity. Jesus matters for eternity. The gospel matters for eternity. Our life in Christ matters for eternity. So let's focus on what's going to last forever and not be so divided over what is only going to take place temporarily. There's diversity. There's differences. Notice in verse 20, once again, there's many members. Verse 28 God has set some of the church, first apostles, secondarily prophets, thirdly teachers. After that, miracles, then gifts of healings, helps, governments, diversities of tongues. Man, we're different. We have different gifts. Think about what even, uh, uh, what, what people are used even here in this local church to execute God's plan. What would happen if every one of us decided we wanted to be pastors? Uh, right now during this season, we'd have a whole lot of cameras and a whole lot of uh, pulpits and a whole lot of empty pews. God's not called us all to be pastors. What if every person emerged and said, man, God has called me to be a Sunday school teacher. God doesn't call everybody to be a Sunday school teacher. Because we'd have a whole lot of classes that we didn't have rooms for with simply teachers and no students. God doesn't, all call, a, God doesn't call us all to do the same thing, but God calls us all to do something. Let's do our part. Let's use this diversity to God's advantage. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11. And he hath gave some apostles, some prophets, and some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers. For what reason? Why this diversity? For the perfecting of the saint, for the work of the ministry, and for the edifying of the body of Christ. Romans chapter 12, verse 5. So we being many are one body in Christ and every one member of one of another having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us. Whether prophecy, let us prophesy according to the proportion of our faith. 
What is the instruction there that we see in the book of 1 Corinthians, that we see in the book of Ephesians, and that we see in the book of Romans? It's as simple as this. Every member has a purpose. And it's our job as each and every member to be exactly who God has called us to be. See, everything changes in our life. And we understand purpose is not something we have to search for. Purpose is not something we have to find. Purpose is something that is found in the person of Jesus Christ. Today, let's make sure we're doing our part. Let's make sure that we're all in with what God has called us to do. Let's not allow this diversity to divide us. See, it's interesting because the world teaches us this. The world teaches us that with diversity, there must be division. But see, what's great is the Word of God teaches us that with diversity, there can be divine union. The world says diversity must equal division. God's Word teaches that with diversity, there can be divine union through the person of Jesus Christ. Let's remember what identifies us. Let's remember what unites us. And let's be okay that everybody's not like us. Think about this, man. Without a doubt, one of the most uh, just topics that can divide people is the topic of music. Understand at the end of the day, we all have our preferences. I can remember me as a young child. My mom, my grandmother, we, they started to drag me all over the place to some Southern Gospel concerts. I can remember one in particular, uh, a group by the name of the Cathedrals. How many of you know what the Cathedrals are? You can do a virtual hand raise right there. Uh, many of you probably do remember the Cathedrals. I can remember going to these concerts, listening to this music. Man, I, f I grew to love this music, the Cathedrals, and then we have some millennials tuned in. Uh, we've got some teenagers tuned in. You're like, man, who are the Cathedrals? I've never heard of them. You know, with each generation, you know, there's generational differences. There's generational diversity. But that diversity, those differences, don't have to redefine what God has already defined. What do we do? We focus on what doesn't change. We focus on the unchanging truth of God's Word. See, understand, we are not our own. We are bought with a price. Let's remember the identity of the church. Let's remember the unity of the church but let's be okay with the diversity of the church. Because what we find in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 is that the diversity, the unity, and the identity are all orchestrated by God. So what can we do as the church? I mean, we can do our part. Uh, looking forward to many more great years and great days of ministry here at Breezy Hill Baptist Church. Man, think about the legacy. Man, remembering what God has done in my life. Uh, right here on this property, Growing up just five minutes down the road, I mean, it has been an amazing ride. You know what I'm convinced of? The ride's not over. I mean, God's got great things in store. The best is yet to come. Remember this, the world at its worst needs what? The world at its worst needs a church at its best. What can we do right now? Let's remember our true identity. Let's remember that we have no choice but to be united. And let's remember that God uses diversity to execute his plan, to execute his will. The world says with diversity there's division. But the word of God teaches us that with diversity there can be divine union through the person of Jesus Christ. Man, let's be united in what God has called us to do. Today you may be tuned in, you may say, all this is foreign to me. You know what changed my life, what can change your life? Understand, Jesus went to the cross for you. People may make you feel like you don't matter, but you matter to God. God loves you with such an unconditional, unfathomable love that we cannot even come close to understanding even a portion of it. Man, I'm thankful for that love today. If you've not accepted Jesus as your personal Savior, man, today may be that day right now, wherever you may be. Understand we're all sinners. I'm a sinner. I'm a pastor. I'm a pastor that sins. I can admit that. But understand, man, Jesus is a difference maker. Jesus can change anyone at any time. If you've never accepted Jesus, take this opportunity right now to ask Jesus to be the Lord and Savior of your life. Uh, man, reach out to us. Uh, reach out to us. Uh, send us a, a, a Facebook message. Give us a call. We would love to help you on your spiritual journey. Here's what we know about spiritual journey. With every journey, you know what there is? There's a step to take. 
That means all of us have a step to take. That first step for some of you may be accepting Jesus as your personal Savior. The next appropriate step is believer's baptism. If you have any questions about that, please let us know. But understand, let us never get to the place. Because we've taken step one and step two, that we stop taking step three, four, five, and so on. Let's take whatever step God has called us to take. Let's live on His purpose. Let's live on His promises. And let's be the church that God has called us to be. Let's close with a word of prayer this morning. Lord, we thank You. We love You. We praise You. God, thank You for uh, just our identity as a church. Lord, we've been able to see it doesn't rest in a building. It doesn't rest in a church. It rests in what you have done in the lives of of the people that have trusted Jesus as their personal Savior. Today, God, work in hearts. Let us be reminded of who we are. And we cannot be reminded of who we are without thinking of what we've been called to do. God, I pray we'll live for you. We'll be full speed ahead. And God, we look forward to how you're going to use this body. We thank you. We praise you. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much, Pastor. I appreciate that reminder that sometimes it's so easy for us to think on the things that are temporal, think on the things that divide us, and that really gets in the way of our relationships, our friendships, uh, when all that should be united all through what Jesus did for us. Uh, you know, it's, it's interesting. God usually allow, he shows the relationship between us and Him uh, in the form of marriage. I don't know how often our marriages would be affected is if we let the differences that we have divide us. See, it's, it's important for us to remember all the relationships that we have need to be founded on grace, mercy, forgiveness, and true love. We need to understand that that's what Jesus did for us when he died on the cross for us. You know, it's a good reminder for us. It, it wasn't the nails that held Jesus on the cross. It wasn't the Roman soldiers at his feet. It wasn't the religious leaders there that were persecuting him. The reason Jesus Christ stayed on the cross was for you and for me. And so that's what we really need to understand. That's the banner that we march under. It's not anything political. And I love love being a, a, a member of the United States of America. But that's not what defines me. That's not what my identity is founded in. It's founded in Christ. That's the difference maker. That's the thing that's going to last for eternity. So today, as we go into this week, make sure you're focusing on the right things. Make sure you're focusing on the things that are eternal, the things that have value. People have value. The words that we say have value. Let's pray, and we'll conclude our service today. God, thank you so much for your love. God, thank you so much for the banner that we get to go through life with, and that's the banner of Jesus Christ. Uh, God, you've called us to to be the, the mirror image of Jesus anywhere we go. You've called us to be the light to a dark world. Help us to go out and, and embrace the things that we face in life. Uh, embrace the differences that we have with one another. God, help us to forgive one another. Help us to, to focus on the things that are important. And that's leading others to Jesus. God, thank you so much for everybody that's tuned in today. I ask you to give us a great week. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.